counterfeit heart, counterfeit pleasure. We were up here, we are looking around thinking, what a beautiful area this is, and God, I'd love to live around here. And being an artist, maybe I can live anywhere I want to live. So I put in my resignation, you know, like, well, I'm going to go and live somewhere beautiful, and I'm going to get some good exercise and go surfing and have some fun. And so that's what happened. Counterfeit pleasure. Some people call it the Middle Kingdom. It's the central coast of California, and it's paradise. We moved in 1979. I got a job at Hearst Castle, and Randy had to find a place to do a silversmithing. It took an act of bravery, but it was the best decision we ever made. This guy. So much of silversmithing is the conceptualizing and the planning of the piece. You spend so much time thinking about how to put everything together, how to get from A to Z, and then when you start doing it, you kind of rely on the craft. You just kind of get into being a craftsman and silversmith, and you do the right silversmithing thing. We're making a bowl, and the process is metal spinning. And I coax the metal up over the wood forms that I've turned. This lathe was made in 1900, and it opens up to spin something 44 inches in diameter. So I can spin a bowl this big if I wanted to, if I could. <laughs> but it's a great workhorse, and it'll probably be around another 100 years, because I can't see how you could hurt this thing. My first job was painting murals in surf shops, and then I traded for surfboards. Friday evening, and our parents would drop us off in Malibu, went and pick us up on you know, Sunday afternoon. We'd surf all day and go and sleep on the beach and have a little bonfire. The waves were perfect, the weather was perfect. We're just kids, we're just soaking it all in. I love shape. And I love sculpture, I love forms. And I want to create movement. I want to give the illusion of like a wave breaking and like a ripples in the ocean. But I also wanted to make it look like it's spinning round. And I also wanted to make a petal, a bloom, look like it's opening up. So I want to create all this movement out of something that was just, just a shape. I create illusions, and you see the reflections coming back, and you aren't quite sure what you're looking at, and I think that's fascinating. If I can get people to look at something for five minutes as opposed to five seconds, I've done my job. And when I was 18, I enrolled in L.A. Valley College. One of the classes was called Crafts Workshop. The first project we made in the class was a band ring, and I carved it and did all this work to it. And I was thinking, I like this feel. I like the way this feels to do this process. This is a, a nice process. And the teacher grabbed that piece from me. She held it up to the class, and she goes, everybody, we have a craftsman in the class. Through the class, we went on a tour of a silversmith studio the silversmith to the stars in Hollywood, Porter Blanchard. I walked in there, I was just blown away. I look at all the wood and leather and steel tools, things that are 100 years old, thinking, my God, look at this place. This is fascinating. And I saw these silver coffee sets he was making, these silver candlesticks, 24 inches tall with S-curves on their base, and just Oh, the craftsmanship and the execution and the design. I was just, I was floored. I could not believe it. Porter was demonstrating some raising on an oval dish. He sees me walk by and he goes, hey, how about you? You come over here and try this out. I looked at what he was doing and I knew what tools to use. And so I grabbed the right raising hammers and I grabbed the right stakes and I start doing it and he goes, 
Well, just hammer a half inch higher than what you're hammering. You have to get the leverage. You have to hit a little bit above. All of a sudden, the thing starts going around. I start raising it, starts moving, and everything's going. And he's going, wow, <laughs> you want to come back and work? And I'm thinking, this guy's 84 years old. He's world renowned. Look at this work he's doing. This is like unbelievable. And what an opportunity this would be. And I decided, yes, I'm going to come back. And this is a piece that Porter Blanchard used to make for his tea set. This is not something I really want to make a teapot out of, but it's something I love for the bowl shape. Porter was designing pewter and silver with a modernist feel to it. But he wasn't only just a modernist, he had his own set of ideas, and he didn't follow anybody else's protocol or thought process. He just did what he wanted to do. This is Porter Blanchard's actual hand work on this. He had a, a set of drawers like this, just full of drawings. These are made by hand. All this sort of wire work here was all filed in. This is all hand filed, and this is all hand chased. This is the oval Georgian scroll. Porter originally did it for Joan Crawford and Cary Grant back in that era. Joan Crawford was his best customer. She had thousands of his pieces. They never saw each other in person, but they spoke on the phone almost daily, and they speak for an hour or two a day. So they're like best friends, besties, without ever seeing each other. Porter was a man before his time. He was into health food. He was into exercise. He had it all going on. We were making big silver platters, and I was holding them for him and twisting them and moving with them, and it was two of us working as one. And it was a great experience. I realized I wasn't going to have too many years with him, and I want to gain as much knowledge as I could. We worked weekends. We worked overtime. We worked nonstop. We had a vault full of silver. We had a shop full of tools, and if I messed anything up, all I had to do is melt it down and go right back and do it again. It was a time that you never can duplicate. So I just filled it up with substance, and it's going to support it while I do my chasing. And I'm going to throw this into the freezer. I'm going to freeze it, and we're going to come back and, and chase it when it's frozen. We found this piece of land by accident. We have 28 acres. We grow walnuts and Asian pears, plums, apples, grapes. We have a five-acre vineyard. Our kids basically grew up going down the creek, picking flowers, catching crawdads, doing all kinds of things that are kind of more country living sort of things. I grew up traveling to different arts festivals. It was super fun. Um, there was usually a musical group. And my dad, he'd take a break from the festivals. We'd go explore the different musical acts. And growing up in his workshop, he always had music playing as well. And a lot of my memories I have of music, I have his hammers also going at the same time. So, yeah, it's pretty special. I've taken this bowl and I've frozen it. I wanted the substance to solidify and become firm, so my chasing went into a hard surface. To establish the lines, I have to have a firm substance. And as it thaws and becomes softer, my chasing will become more pronounced. I get more curves and more shape to my pieces. Chasing encompasses many different things, surface ornamentation. And this is fluting. I'm using the light tool to establish the line, to get the line started. Then I use heavier tools to make it a deeper line. And then I'll take other tools to actually start shaping it and creating the roundness of the forms. In 1993, I received a letter and it said, we have chosen 35 American craftsmen to be part of the first collection of American crafts in the White House. And you're invited to be in it. I had been playing around this idea, just the look of a dome, more of a dome look. And with the three-tiered effect, playing on threes, with columns on it, with gold and silver, 
And it kind of it seemed like a White House bowl to me. So I said, how about this piece? And um, it worked out perfect. It looked very fitting in the White House. We're invited back to the White House for the opening of their White House craft collection. I felt so fortunate to be included into this group, and, and it was a great night. Handmade objects are becoming so rare, especially in the metalsmith world with 3D imaging and different avenues people are taking now to make metalwork and jewelry. When something is handmade from beginning to end by one person, I can't not believe that part of their soul is in that piece. It will last forever and ever and ever. I love being where we are, and I love having a shop like this. But it's really nice if you can come home from a good morning of surfing, come and jump in here, and then just create pieces. It's not much of a better lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs>